Hey teachers, so I put together a video for you to help you figure out where things are in the library. It looks like it's going to be about 20 minutes long, so sit back and relax, get yourself a snack, maybe put it on in the background, um, but it just shows you where things are located. A few things have changed since last year, so you'll want to take a peek. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'm here for you. Um, also, if you would like um, if you have any books that you need to get ordered, things that were mentioned that you're wondering if we have, let me know. I'd be glad to get them for you, okay? So, um, enjoy. Here we go. Over here on the fifth grade side of the library, um, we have our bank of computers. Students use this when they come to the library for searching books. It's our, you know, our automated catalog. But they can also use it for classroom assignments. If you have somebody who needs to maybe take a Canvas quiz or something like that, you are welcome to send them to the library so that they can do their work here if they're making it up or something like that. Um, just make sure that they know what to do because I probably won't know what they're talking about when they try to get to it. Um, also, um, just, you know, if you give me a little call before they head this way, that way I know that they made it and everything is all right, that's fine. Um, yeah, anyway, so we're welcome to use these. We also, if you um, need to send a small group out, I'm totally fine with small groups coming into the library, maybe using some of our tables or something like that to take quizzes or work with an aide. That's totally fine. I just ask that you let whatever adult is in charge of them know that if I'm with a class, they'd need to use the table back in the workroom or perhaps find another place um, if something is going on. But otherwise, they're welcome to come in and do what needs to be done. So one of the major questions that I get a lot in the library from teachers is, where is my cart? I reserved it, but I can't find it. So let me tell you where I hope carts will wind up. They're kind of spread across the library so that they can have enough plugs in that you can wave to our people walking down the hallway. Um, so this is our wow carts. They're all plugged in. This is the sixth grade side of the library. Each one should be numbered, um, and I'm not sure where we decided we're signing up for those. I'm thinking it's a Google Doc somewhere. So let's go see where the other ones are. Here's our Chrome carts. Um, they're in this corner here. I like how small and compact they are, but we've got two, and here they are. So we made it back into the library workroom and that's where the iPad cart is located. Please remember whenever you finish with a cart and are returning it back to the library to make sure it gets plugged in. That way the next person having it will make sure everything's charged up for them because we all know how irritating it is when the person before us didn't take care of things. So help us out. Don't be that person. Make sure things get plugged in so they can get charged. So here in the library workroom, we do have a die cut um, situation. Now let me warn you, the die cuts are kind of old and they aren't terribly sharp. So you need to make sure that you bring your patience as you're cutting. But if you need any letters for any activities or bulletin boards or all that stuff, it's located here in the library workroom. This is the beginning of our teacher corner. This is where we keep all of our professional development books. Through the years, we've got quite the collection. This first section is about just teaching. How do I teach better? The first days of school is one of those books that if you didn't read it in college, you probably should come and get one. Um, all the different things that come out through the district in time. We also have things for all subject matter. For example, this is math. We have a ton of stuff. Now, it looks pretty old, but I know that numbers haven't changed in a while, so sometimes going back can be good if we look at how things were done back in the day. Underneath, we've got writing, all kinds of fun writing things, and some reading things down here. As we keep going to the right, we've got our science stuff. This is a whole kind of encyclopedia set on sciencey things that isn't quite a reference material, it's teachers. Anyway, if you're at all interested, please let me know if you think you might have use for this. I would love to let you use it. I also have all my novel sets over here um, that we use for book clubs, but if anything looks good and you're interested, let me know. I'd be happy to share. And over here we have some things. This is more, oh, I don't know, like teacher things, like behavioral management, like what do I do with all these boys in my class, and parenting tips and helps, which actually kind of go really well into um, classroom management. So that's a big section of our professional development library. So the whole back wall of the library is 
reading resources for the most part. There's a little bit of math, but it's mostly reading. These buckets that you see, these boxes that you see, this is all guided reading. It's leveled. Um, there's all the different sets that have come in through the years. In fact, an amazing book fairy dropped these off here, and already I believe someone has been digging in to see what's here. Um, I haven't had a chance to look through them, obviously. The way that you get these books is you come and you take them. You really don't have to check them out through the library. I'm going to trust you to bring them back because you're professionals, and I know that you take care of those things when you get done with them. Um, as we kind of move down the hallway, you'll see some tubs right here. These are content leveled, so they will help you out that way. Anyway, that's all it is. You just come and take what you need. So this big poster case right here is in the back corner of this teacher professional development area. And inside, it's maps. If you'll notice on the tags, they are roughly organized by continent and sections of the world. Literally, tons and tons of maps. There's also orbits posters. These are great for teaching a whole group or a small group in um, reading. Um, let me pull this out and show you what I'm talking about. Basically, it's kind of like if you don't have your computer and you can't project for some reason, you could use something like this to help teach in a group. In this particular one, each one has its own little um, emphasis that it's working on. This one looks like it's working with nonfiction text features. Um, they're here. They haven't been used a lot, um, but I wish they would. This is also a good thing that your small groups can do. If you are small grouping or if you have independent groups, you can use these in your um, centers. Um, let me show you what the maps look like and show you what I'm talking about for those. As you pull them out, all kinds of things. They might have been pulled out of National Geographic or something like that, but that's kind of what they are. Anyway, another thing you can use, and if they don't make it back, well, it's sad, but if it's there and you're using it, I guess that's what it's really for. So don't be afraid. Come and check out some of the big stuff that you can use in your classroom. So the teacher book swap. This is the Collins version of the little free library. Basically, this is for our grown-up books. I really hope that as teachers you are reading because we know how important that is. If you are not a reader and you never do it by choice, I really hope you'll take a step out and this is where you can start. In this place, this is just books that are going to be coming from my home and their home and your friend's home and we're going to be sharing them. We're done reading them and it's something that we'd just like to let somebody else read if they want to. So take a book, leave a book, whatever you need to do. I've got plenty of room for growth. All these shelves can get full if you want them to. So you don't even need permission, just come and get them and let's keep reading. Here's what's left of the reference section in the library. Yes, we still have hard paper encyclopedias. We also have dictionaries and some other types of encyclopedias of science terms and phrases and things like that. A lot of the reference books I put back in the shelves so that the kids could use them and find them. When you do your search online, you'll be able to see them there. If anyone has need of every National Geographic from 1956 to 2014, please let me know. Otherwise, these might be going somewhere in the next few months. Here are some of our content kits that I've put together. What I did is I pulled um, magazines from way back and book sets for each of the big kind of units that our science and social studies classes do in both fifth and sixth grade. I keep them back here and I hope that if you're looking for something to supplement, maybe you need to go up some levels or down some levels, maybe something in here can help you. Let's take a look at what you'll find in these. First of all, like I said, they're general. Physical science or let's say when you're studying Asia or maybe if your time period's Young America. That's just kind of how it is. I didn't really quite know what it needed, but you get the idea. Inside you've got some magazines that go along with it, different book sets that we had that might match, um, and those might be a little easier or they might have some supports and helps to help some of those kids not quite getting it. Here's some for our physical science things, measuring tools. Maybe someone just needs something else to do 
<laughs> and you can use this small groups, think anchor stations and things like that. This right here is a list of books that kind of match it that we have in our library that you might want to go through and pull. I went ahead and put those on lists that you can get off of Destiny. So due to the popularity of our graphic novels and stuff, I've moved them into the mainstream. Um, kind of keep it easier to keep up with the kids. Our graphic nonfiction is up here on the left, and then we've got our comic books underneath, and then to the right is graphic novels, the longer stories that are like real books, you could say. Um, if you're interested in learning more about how to use these with classes and kids, maybe you're reluctant readers or maybe you're advanced readers, let me know. I'd love to talk to you about that. Um, I think they're a really great resource. It's so much more than just easy reading with pictures. It really is, and I'd love to um, see how we can incorporate this more into our classroom. So, I hope that was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions, and don't forget, there's always some chocolate for you behind the counter, because you never know when you're going to have one of those days. Have a great day.